Hi, this is Scott with Organolock. Today I'll be talking about our BB1000 biomass burner. It's a 1 million BTU burner. Well, starting with the combustion chamber, first off is we've got extra heavy duty door, but you can see quality we built into it. It's got a double hinge on it, which makes it very easy to get in and do the maintenance work. Inside of the firebox, which we manufacture ourselves, we pour the ceramics. There are 12 air inlets. There is a pit on the left side where we pull out the ash or biochar. The arms are considered sacrificial and removable. You simply lift them out and we put new ones in. And you can see on the far side, the larger tube is where the biomass falls in. On the left side is where we have a gas igniter that we use to light the system initially, which takes about five minutes. Or it can be used as a gas backup system, up to 1.2 million BTUs input. So a good burning system like this starts with a high quality and high efficiency type combustion chamber, and that's what we have here. It's all stainless steel, other than the ceramic and insulation. Uh, you'll notice underneath here, we have a large opening. That is because underneath we do have the stirring mechanism for the firebox that makes easy maintenance underneath. All right, let's talk about the biochar feature. Again, we put the biochar option on all of our machines now. It is automatic. It is continuous. The machine itself will burn about 200 pounds of biomass per hour to get your million BTUs output. Well, if you burn 200 pounds of properly sized wood chip, you're gonna get about 20 gallons of biochar out. Again, it's all automated. The machine knows when to turn itself on based on how long it's been in what we call a stable mode, and it will turn itself off when it's going back to sleep. Let's say your heat requirement is gone. So again, you've got control over how fast it runs on the computer. This guy right here is a peristaltic pump, again, controlled by the computer, and it is used to quench biochar as it comes out. All right, let's move from the combustion side of our technology to the heat exchange side. So the big box behind me is the water heat exchanger. Now to get the heat from combustion over here, we have what we call a bridge. And you notice on this particular machine, there's a little box up here. This particular machine is going to be attached to one of our biomass processing systems. And that's where we pull off the flue gas for our drying process. But inside there is a 350 gallon water heat exchange system with a lot of tubes in it. Very efficient in terms of capturing the heat that comes off of here at up to 1700 degrees, comes out over here nominally around 300 degrees. We have the ability to sweep and clean the tubes. In behind me on this uh, side here, there are two clean out tubes. There's also two in the back, depending on your layout of your floor. Now, one of the beauties of, I'll point out here, when you use the biochar option, very little ash comes through the machine. The maintenance requirements are reduced significantly when you make char because it's coming out over here instead. All right, now we're at the end of the heat exchanger where we have a closet, as we call it, with an ID fan inside. So in here, Three horsepower ID fan stands for induced draft. That means we've got the whole system on a vacuum or a negative pressure, uh, which means it's a lot safer because all the gases are being pulled inward and then out back through the back here. Uh, you'll notice a few wires here. This one's still under construction, uh, but that yellow wire here is where we measure the temperature for the output, which is actually a nice feature we have in that if you're output temperature back here gets high, the computer will recognize that and start shutting your machine down and essentially telling you, you need to clean your machine. So it's a nice safety feature. And behind here in this wall, we have a cyclone. So the output of the ID fan hits the cyclone. We capture some of the fine particulate in there and then out to atmosphere. All right, here we are on the back side of the heat exchanger. Let's start at the top. Up here we have an expansion tank when the water gets hot, it has to somewhere to go as it expands. So we've got the tube and we've got a switch on there that tells us if that tank's too low, it'll shut the machine down and give you a message. We have the ability to measure both the hot and the cold water temperatures for flow and BTU measurement. Three inch plumbing allows for the 100 GPM that you need for good thermal transfer. You've got a protection valve here. That's what we use to protect the machine from condensate. We have clean out ports. There's one in the back for the cyclone and two more down here for the actual heat exchange tubes. Then we have the drain and or fill tube right there. And then we have 
just the wiring junction box from between the two, the combustion chamber to here. This is the igniter that we use to ignite the biomass to begin with. We also use it as a backup gas system up to 1.2 million BTUs. But again, this normally only runs about five minutes to get things started, then it just shuts off. Everything after that is a combination of your biomass and your air, and the computer takes care of that for you. Over here behind the actual igniter burner, you can see the UL gas train that's required. And then here we have the motor that's actually pushing the biochar out of the system. The fuel bin here is a six yard. It has an agitation system in the bottom that will drive the material into this horizontal auger and then up into the machine. It can handle a wide range of fuels. It can handle sawdust, it chips, a combination thereof, or pellets. You'll see here I have a little bracket we're getting ready to mount. It has a sensor on there that will tell you if your fuel system is empty and shut down the machine and or turn on automatic heat. Of course, we have the output of the feed bin system. We have a horizontal auger here into an incline auger where it drops the biomass into the firebox from here. Uh, a few things to note is the gearboxes and motors are all industrial. The gearboxes are enclosed, the motors are enclosed, and probably most important on our machine is the emphasis on safety. So here you're gonna see you've got a little tank that's a three gallon fire suppression tank. It's attached to a water fuse over here. So if somehow we got past a number of other safety features first, for instance, we have a snap disc. This one will pop out at a 190 degrees. So if somehow flue gases have come up, let's say you had a bird's nest in the flue pipe or something like that, and it got warm up here, this will turn the machine off electrically. If somehow a fire crept up through here or here and around the corner, there is a solder, mechanical solder fitting right here that will drop out at 130 degrees. And to put that in perspective, I can still touch this at 130, but if it gets that warm, it will melt out. It'll drop three gallons of fire suppression. So that'll flood this part. If somehow it went down, got all the way over to here, the second tank kicks in as well. And they all have level sensors on them to shut down the machine and give you an error message as well. So very safe machine to run inside or outside. The uh, specifications we've had in the past on UL where you can run this on a non-combustible floor and within three feet of the wall. So from that perspective, safety first, we feel we've got that covered for you. And over here we have the control box. It does have a touchscreen control. Uh, of course, you're mandatory on and off. We have the ability to hook up to the internet. But the primary thing is with the controls, you can monitor everything that's happening. The computer is taking care of all the adjustments to the air and the fuel rates and the safety issues. So you can rest assured that the controls on this machine will handle any need that you have. All right, so now that we've been around the BB-1000, let's talk a little bit about the flexibility of the machine and some of the applications that we're using it for. The flexibility would come in the form of the number of different kinds of fuel you can burn. It can be manures, it can be all sorts of different biomass, but uh, our emphasis here is to convert waste material into usable product, and that starts with the ability to burn multiple kinds of fuel. So when you add that to the ability to use the heat in so many different ways, we have a lot of different applications as well. One of which would be horse manure. You can burn the horse manure, you can dry it, you can repurpose it for used bedding, you can turn it into fertilizer, but in the end you end up with this nice little circle where you get to use a product that you're trying to figure out how to get rid of. You could use it for heat treatment of pallets, or firewood. For instance, with the ability to pull off flue gas up here very safely, you get the high temperature you need to be able to do those drying processes. And you can see that with our equipment, we're very flexible on all the things we can do. Our motto is creating innovative biomass solutions. If you have a need to turn your waste stream biomass into a value-added product, feel free to give us a call or visit us at Organolock.com. Thanks for watching.